first few uh, words I would put, I would like to uh, speak in English so uh, thank you for the Taksam uh, Center for giving me this opportunity uh, as the director has studied on me and uh, she uh, research about me, <laughs> so explain uh, uh, who I am and who I was. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, it is uh, in now at this moment, uh, from my perspective, from my point of view, uh, I'm not the important guy here. Uh, from my point of view, you people are really important. So, uh, because uh, the, the topic that we are going to share, uh, I'm going to share with you all, is something uh, that is a kind of practice I cannot practice alone. You all need to practice it by knowing it by giving kinds of investi 
making kind of in investigation into that and then bringing this into uh, your day-to-day -day life practice. So for that, this uh, special place uh, in Zurich, uh, somehow we need to meet and then to organize. So it's the uh, Laksam, the uh, center, they have provided this kind of a, uh, opportunity to all of us. And now you all came here. First of all, we need to check our mind why we are here. Today is a Friday. <laughs> one of the most important uh, maybe some people wanted to go out but somehow they wanted okay let me give a try today uh, starting the weekend so you could do so many sort of things enjoy in a very different ways but somehow oh, you are looking at this strange fellow wearing something yellow and then staying on kind of throne, just wondering what I'm going to say. Um, kind of stranger. So a few days later, I will be not a more a stranger. We will, hopefully, we will become friends. <laughs> so it, uh, that's why, from my point of view, the each and every people who just because dharma itself is so precious it is something talking about uh, it is talking something about what truly is happiness because in this in the 21st century and if you look back at the uh, our uh, our ancestors how they, they have spent their life. And time to time, you can watch on the, your neighbors. It's not like a, a judging on them, but somehow wondering what is happiness. If you, if it is a kind of a, a it is actually a very big question because all of us, what we do in our lives is for our own happiness. But somehow not really understanding what is the happiness, then we somehow do so so many uh, with respect to the, all the beings out there. We do, including myself, do so many stupid things to bring enjoyment in our life because we wanted to be happy. So now uh, the happiness. As one of my friends, uh, a good teacher, so he always asks his students, if you are talking about happiness, then uh, that happiness, for how long kind of period you want? For one hour, two hours, three hours, maybe one day, one week, one month, one year, and then until, until the rest of your life. So which kind of happiness are you talking about? So then it becomes quite difficult to answer that question because we never kind of believed that this kind of happiness exists. But with this kind of a uh, question, this kind of curiosity, Buddha was searching to the, for this kind of happiness. Unlike, uh, otherwise, uh, if you look at the story of Buddha, he is a kind of person who has kind of everything. He is a prince, and he is talented, and he uh, he has all the heritage from his father, and the father really wants to him to become a king but somehow somehow buddha i'm sure buddha likes those things for sure to become a king to be a rich but then there is another 
way of thinking. Even I have all those, these things, it doesn't necessarily mean I will be happy. So then his uh, kind of a search goes on. So uh, due to his way of searching is so beautiful because he has come to come to the conclusion in his life that whatever you do something in this life, it will never bring happiness. Because I feel like my mind every time is so confused. Unless I don't uh, purify my mind, guarantee I guarantee there will be no happiness at all. It is more like a happiness for uh, temporary happiness. So to in answer to the question of uh, what is happiness, then usually we talk about uh, being free from suffering as the answer to that question. What is happiness? The ha happiness, we might answer that question as being free from suffering. But if this question is asked to us, then if you are excited, and if you get something a present, and if you got a lottery, I mean, all this kind of excitement is a happiness for us. But uh, have we ever experienced that, uh, uh, the, the happiness of being free from suffering? Oh, the, the happiness from uh, free, free from free from suffering. We have you ever uh <laughs> oh, this is speaker. Okay. okay. I was thinking this is a mic. Okay. So they can hear me well. Okay. Okay. Um, so uh have we ever experienced this kind of a uh, uh, happiness? And I did a little research on my own way of thinking. Uh, my parents had have this uh, uh, migraine, right? and then uh, due to that, for a long time I do have this migraine too. So then I was always thinking, whenever I have this headache in my life, then I come to believe myself, if I don't have this kind of headache in my life, I will call this a happiness for sure. This is really bothering me. So, now, whenever I don't have, now for such a long time, I kind of uh, uh, liberated from this <laughs> server. So, still, I feel like if I look at this kind of pain, because I don't have this anymore, at the way of this looking, I'm liberated. I call, I can say, I'm so happy. But then there are other things which is bothering me a lot. So then I can say, because my happiness is I want something, I want something, I want something. It's never been like, may I never get this kind of suffering. And then more Buddha is trying to say, it, it's like he's saying, the more suffering is the clinging. So more, if there's no more clinging towards something strongly, then I'm liberated from it. Whether I have it or whether I have this, whether I don't have it, but I can be super happy. So, but in our life, we have never come to the experience like this kind of happiness. 
的左上线，其实整个，呃，开店，开店对下底，啊，就是，呃，你要他们去，到位的下苦多比呢，哎，你铁路，对是，是呢，哎，你，啊，你怎么十年去，你怎么十年去，俺们就多年他们去，多年他们去，第二年就第二家是那个他去。So then if we uh, can understand in some way that uh, attachment is that lies at the root of uh, all of our um, sort of difficulties and that, and that, and that grasping uh, lies at the root of the attachment, then we start to kind of understand this process. Mm. 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 嗯呀，当然就，呃，咱们，呃，他，第一面送的，比如三一面八度，哎，他全在前面，就是走到的，走到的地头了，够远的，哎，第二段呢，他的接路不接的，哎，啷个走啊？那么送，是准备，哎，第二段了呀，这个，中间那段呢，可以继续接的，哎。And so, um, uh, from today until Sunday, um, in in this sort of coming together of, of, of studying the Dharma. Then the main subject will be this, or what I've just talked about here, about the um, the relationship between attachment and uh, grasping and and our uh, problems. And in um, uh, Lama Tsongkhapa's three principal aspects of the past, um, we can say that the main um, sort of out of all of those, the main uh, sort of subject, the, the main sort of topic is about this grasping and how. Um, this grasping brings us uh, all of the uh, uh, all of our all all of the faults and disadvantages to us, and by uh, and removing that grasping helps us to remove those things, and then thinking what kind in in if if we were to operate in the context where we had no grasping, then what kind of dharma practice uh, would that then be, uh, if we were able to sort of free ourselves from this grasping. <laughs> Their lives. <laughs> it's a couple of lives. That's a relief. Huh. But I, I was, I am giving kind of a talk, but one side of my mind, <laughs> I tried to release that kind of tension. I couldn't. I was thinking like this will come up, this will come up. That's how it was happening, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Mm. Mm. And so, um, this uh, so the the main uh, topic that we'll be studying here is the Lama Tsongkhapa's uh, three principal aspects of the path, and uh, and all of this is sort of uh, come you know all of these teachings which have uh, come down through the Buddha, but um, really uh, whatever teachers uh, th there are, whether it's Kaju Sakin or whatever lineages it comes through, then the the explanation is really uh, here that um, if we don't have these three aspects of the path. Uh, um, then there, there really is. There, we're really not engaging in dharma practice unless we have these three aspects of the palm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of these traditions, whether this is coming through Jay Rimshe, but if we talk about the others, the Tibetan lineages of Kajisaki Nyingma, etc., all of them will say to us that without these three uh, crucial aspects, then really we're not uh, doing dharma practice.
And so, um, yes, of course, in the Mayana tradition, uh, this is uh, this is this is completely sure that these three aspects of the path are uh, absolutely necessary for practice of Mayana path. But even if we look in the sort of the the Hinayana tradition of the more modest. Uh, sc scope of the Hinayana tradition, then uh, even if uh, the focus of practice would be only uh, liberation, but still um, in that context, uh, renunciation is needed. One of the aspects of renunciation is needed. Um, so putting aside the sort of discussion about the practitioners of the three scopes for a moment, but just looking at this uh, renunciation, and this renunciation has to be supported by uh, a kind of complete disgust with uh, everything uh, about samsara, everything that is samsaric, and then also understanding that that process of uh, being in samsara is 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 created because we are uh, we are under the sway of uh, our um, of karma and mental afflictions, and um, then for somebody who understands that process of how karma and mental afflictions drive uh, the uh, the samsaric life and that they understand that there actually can be no real happiness uh, to be found within uh, samsara then you you then uh, then you look towards um uh, dealing with this uh, karma and mental affliction the discussed in the chat so, so we here we should really differentiate between uh, uh what is the meaning of uh, disgust yeah. uh, towards samsara and then also differentiate between the uh, okay so whenever we have we got into a problem, and especially I'm talking about a huge problem, not like uh, that you are trying to get a cup of coffee and then you cannot get <laughs> not that kind of stuff. That, but I'm talking about something big, something that you uh, you might feel like, you know, what's the reason I need to stay alive? Such a big thing like that. Uh, and then maybe feeling like bankrupt, okay? And then somebody who is really, really relied on high the reputation, and something, something uh, happened, and then you feel like a big loss. Well, so regarding this, uh, yeah, we. We have, uh, we think we we have so much thinking towards that thing. So actually, uh, people saying whenever you have this kind of problem, then you will always from your mouth whether some are good practitioner or some are like they trying to language ever correct repeat repeat yeah repeat it because he heard somewhere. So the mostly people will say when. They have this kind of problem in life, they will say, Oh, samsara. <laughs> <laughs> what should I expect from this? <laughs> we say that. But then if you look at this picture, how we how we or other people point this picture of samsara, always they are pointing the samsara towards outside. It, it is more like they are 
putting the finger pointed towards the tear. That thing should supposed to happen like that. How I expected, it's not working like that. Then you just find it. that is a samsara. <laughs> <laughs> it never been a problem how you grasp to the do thing and then you feel like I'm grasping towards that so much. Why should this has to work as what I think? How I teach it. Like one of my great teacher, he he would say sometimes we are too much uh more. Uh, too, uh, too sort of because uh, of the powerful, not powerful no. you uh, have so much influence. Uh, 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 wanted to control something, yeah, okay, yeah. that's better to, to be in control, being uh, control, be in control, so so one, yeah, yeah, so so want to be in control of everything, uh, you in control, yeah, in control, right, so, uh, in control, okay, overly control. Uh, the reason is you have a plan <laughs> to meet somebody and it rain. Have a <laughs> and then you say, Well, this stupid this weather. Why should you have to have to rain now? <laughs> so you already have this kind in control because of your mindset. That being so you wanted to control something very strong. So the, the problem, the stress, it's on you. It's nothing going to change the weather. So here, uh, when we talk about renunciation, before I think before uh, before you have to understand what truly is renunciation and what you want to renounce, and then you feel this is something I wanted and this makes me so weak. And that's why the, in uh, Chattamawaki, in the Vaibhashika school, uh, they say, uh, 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 what's, what is sort of contaminated phenomena? What, what's, what, what do we sort of define as contaminated? And then, Shichigi, uh, so something which is able to uh, something uh, a base which is able to which is which help helps to generate our mental afflictions. So that's what they sort of identify as being a, 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 this category of contaminated phenomena. Uh, ま、茶ごて、ちちごとな。てんげぎ、さちぎ。え、ま、茶ごて。あ、た、てんじぎかねで、てんじぎかねで、てんじぎかねで、てんじぎかねで、てんじぎかねで、てんじぎかねで、て
if one could understand what is truly uh, renunciation, then you will now come to realize what to renounce, what, what not to renounce. So, uh, why the great master like Melareva, the great, why he has abandoned everything? It looks like it, uh, the pic in the in the picture of Melareva, it looks like uh, he has given everything, right? Oh, sure. Sure. Give, give, yeah, give, given away, given everything. away everything. And then you might think like, okay, maybe uh, if Melareva has this this thing, and then it makes him more kind of like uh, grasping. grasping towards it. It's not all that. Because he will not, he has a commitment in his life. Until I cannot use this cup, an extraordinary cup, uh, without attachment. Okay? Every time this cup me, makes my uh, kind of a grasping much stronger, I'm not going to use it. And this grasping towards the arrogance, five arrogance, especially mind. Because it's saying, even, even you have kind of a given up to, uh, to all your belongings, but then you go to the a cave. <laughs> In the cave, within a few days later, there will be another level of grasping in the cave, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then, and then, of course, this body will also be one of the biggest reminder that it will feel like uh, that ultimately it brings so much grasping. So, for that reason, the commitment of the Nareva is unless I don't get this kind of liberation, this liberation from this grasping, I'm not going to move away from this cave, which gives me the one of the best opportunity to train my mind here. So once he got the fully enlightenment, what did he do? He went down, eat well, give <laughs> teaching, or maybe he do offerings, and like Buddha, right? What did he do? He abandoned everything at the beginning, and then he comes back, and then he goes back, goes back. A great king comes to welcome him, yeah. like, I heard you went for such a long time, and I heard all this, your wonderful stories. So let me ask you one question. What did you gain from this, uh, from this difficult journey that you had? And the smile, with a smile, Buddha says, I didn't gain anything, I lost everything. <laughs> I lost the most important, the ego, the grasping. So I lost everything. So that king, he has intention to know what is the, the true the, uh, liberation. Then, because that's why he asked, he got a very direct teaching. And that immediately turns into one of the greatest student kids. <clears throat> so, uh, but the uh, uh, people who didn't get the right message sometimes, what we do is saying, this is samsara, this is samsara, that is samsara, and then they act very differently. <laughs> Nothing changing from here, inside, they try to do all sort of things drinking with big tangas and then oh, putting all this and that. But the great Melareva doesn't have anything to do. But we have so many things. Some of <coughs> the best design quality from all the way from Nepal. Oh, so good. I paid you know, like a, maybe 60,000 francs. Or that. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> and the more grasping, you know, that <laughs> <laughs> not really, not a really great holy object there. <laughs> we didn't bless actually the one great master. Ah, Kuba. Country nine. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, one, uh, one great master said, people go to pilgrimage. 
and then they go to the holy sites. And then they, when they reach to the holy site, and then they see only ordinary. Mm -hmm. And then they go to this holy place and say, oh, I've been there, this is so wonderful. And they're coming. Actually, they didn't get nothing. In order to get the holy from their side, first you need to bless the ordinary and know how ordinary it is. And then remember the great being has used this place and seeing something extraordinary there, this is blessing giving towards that, and then you will receive it. Nobody tries to do that. So that's actually very true. It's not that the blessing is like uh, putting mantras on that or mm -hmm. doing some kind of purification, putting water on that, mm -hmm. not that. Most important is what is the nature? Agreed uh, the, in the 15th the, uh, the ch chapter of the uh, as uh, clear, clear words. Uh, reason I give this uh, uh, teaching in uh, Italy, so that's quite fresh in my mind, so yeah. that's why I, I, I can bluff. <laughs> uh, so, India, it says. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If there is a, a person, if there is a person who has so many char characters, right? yeah, in, like in a play, or or in a play, mm -hmm. in the play, if the person wears some kind of a, I don't know, monkey or donkey mm -hmm. or cow, and he acts very nicely, and then ultimately, what will come down to your <laughs> mind is, now what is this? Who is the real person of that? No. Who is that great person? So we are so eager to know that. So now, now when we in our life, we never ask this question, what is this really so-called this when I think truly something there? What is that really? We never kind of ask this. We took for like a granted, like yes, this is truly so good, so good, so good, so good. So good. So I will, I will explain that in the, uh, because this is uh, one of the three, uh, this way of the section will be the one of the three aspects. So anyway, uh, mm -hmm. so uh, here I feel uh, very fortunate to, uh, to uh, share this, uh, uh, some kind of my experience, mostly uh, whatever, uh, that I'm going to share will be uh, my teachers and then the Islamist the Lelamas to experience how he, uh, they taught me. And maybe some of you already heard that. So it is for the people who have already heard this teaching and then it will be a good reminder. People who haven't uh, gone through this text, but this would be a something to look into. So, because uh, sometimes life can be long, sometimes life can be short. So when it, how do you define it? My life is so long, when your life becomes so boring, then we say life is long. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 100 years or 200 years. So when you, how do you define it? Life is so, so less, it's more like how much you enjoy. So uh, that's why uh, whenever you go through a problem, cry and yell as normally how you do it. But then you should come back to the some state of mind. This is not happening. Helping. This is not helping. So then you need to have a kind of emergency exit. <laughs> or maybe uh, yeah, plan Exit B strategy, yeah. uh -huh. and plan B. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise if it is only plan A, <laughs> <laughs> then we always cry, and then somehow it's not going to happen. Helping, so uh, that's why uh, this uh, the text when you listen 
I think setting up this kind of motivation will be uh, these uh, two days. Uh, we'll start a call maybe tomorrow now, let's say. It will be uh, quite a uh, quite a memory. Yeah, okay. Okay. Now we, uh, I think, we can go to the text. Uh, three principal aspects of the path. So we start with that, and then in the middle of the very talk about the bodhicitta, and then uh, I will uh, bring the the second uh, the text, yeah. which is the. Uh, Transforming, right? Transforming, taking, taking, suffering. taking suffering, taking suffering into onto the path, path, onto the path, into the path, onto the path, onto the, onto the path. No, into okay. the path. Okay. <laughs> English is very complicated. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. That is not a Jerry, not Tambochi, Lamana, the charts of those. Uh, so the first uh, the the first words of the uh, the text is a homage in it, uh, from J Rimshi and it says homage to the most venerable teachers. Can you take out this incense? The incense, incense, incense yeah. Yeah. Uh, venerable, here it's translated as venerable. Oh, venerable. venerable or pure, sometimes it's translated as pure. The Jirun said, Narolia, Kichi, the Tango Yadi, and a Chigi, Ketun Sansum, Gigantella Tempajila, Nichitun said this. So in relation to when it, in this first sort of line of the text where it says homage to the most venerable teachers, uh, then this word, this particular uh, word uh, venerable, which is used here, um, it, it sort of refers to the quality, uh, refers actually, um, refers to a quality of possessing uh, three other qualities, the quality of being uh, learned, uh, being um, learned, uh, sort of pure and maybe noble. There are these three uh, sort of terms which that that uh, word venerable sort of encompasses. Uh, it is it it should be more uh, because before we take any refuge, praising uh, somebody, you should be super honest. <laughs> you shouldn't be like, oh, the Buddha is so great, oh, this is so great. And then somebody asks you why you are saying this, and then you come up to like, that is not saying this. And then it becomes like a very uh, it is a one kind of reason. It's okay, but it's not strong enough to bring your faith, your faith stronger. That's why you will be not give a kind of this positive influence to the other person. So that's why when he were when these great masters, when they write uh, kind of praising to the Buddha or to the or on the Guru, they will be very precise on bringing the, some kind of qualities and then they say, I'm making this kind of homage or the praise. Uh, so here, when Lama Tsongkhapa is praising his master, who, uh, all the teachers who taught him Specifically, three principles to observe, uh, three principles of the, the aspect. aspect of the path. Blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> need a water. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, as we say, causal, causal refuge, yeah, and then uh, resultant. Sorry, resultant, resultant, resultant refuge. So, whenever you have great somebody, uh, someone, uh, particularly the holy object, you need to see some qualities that in future that you can bring it with, within you. So it's not like believing, oh, he is a great and one day I pray, pray, pray and practice, I will become like him. No, that doesn't work like this. So there, here, whenever uh, Lama Chankapa, when he 
says Jijun Lama number chart several is the first uh, homage to the most venerable, the, most uh, venerable teachers. Venerable teacher. So in this venerable, the connotation of this mm. has to uh, has to bring the meaning of uh, the three qualities: Jejong, oh. Keba, Zumba, Sambo. Uh, so these three qualities are being learned, uh, pure or virtuous, and and mm. let's say noble. Jejongga. <laughs> Uh, so if we uh, when we're on the sort of at the, at the stage of the kind of basic stage of, of, of training in the path then if we're able to see these three qualities of the uh, uh, see the three qualities of le uh, learn uh, learningness um purity and uh, and then sort of nobleness then uh, at, at, at the result, uh, when we come to the end of the path, these will as a as a gurgle, those some the gurgle. Oh, the the path, the judo, right? Yeah. So, ah, uh, so this mm -hmm. this kind of sort of thing of the qualities and uh, this and these the qualities become a sort of uh, in, in the con in the sort of um, continuum or in the way that uh, uh, becomes the um, the three qualities which we speak of the Buddha of the uh, quality of wisdom the quality of compassion or loving kindness and power uh, which are the uh, three qualities of the Buddha mm. ジェビネマンコリチャンネルよ。あ。いないけちゅうてあるでしゅ。キャバレーセ、キャバレーカルジェシナ。あらんそら、あね、ザザディ、あね、ミョモトゥソンディ、マジュミジパタンギヨ。
人均比开发的更比比人均低，结果说是卡最新的越南新的卖的越南，第二年前了，俺那边赚不了呀，就爬上那把他了，爬上这个高层了，第二年一干年的快干年的马上得了，现在呀，干年四月干不了，四月几个几月？그런가능성이있는진짜신기가능성이있는데진짜파산코리케온주전대진짜게파산나바타바테를위해드는데라상부없어 And so then the third quality of being sort of let's say noble, um, and then so we we had so not just uh, not just thinking in, in the in the context one of one's own qualities uh, such as we've discussed here, say uh, one has qualities of being learned or one has qualities of being virtuous. Uh, however much that is the case, whether we have, uh, you know, the, the, these are very strong qualities or not, but however much uh, these qual the, these qualities we possess, then with a uh, kind of altruistic uh, mind, uh, we have that wish to be able to um, uh, sort of re reveal those or to, 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 to show others the, the value of these qualities. And that sense in which, um, of course, my suffering and uh, my difficulties are not exactly their difficulties, but that sense in which the way in which um, uh, the, the, the way in which the difficulties arise, so that others are the same in um, uh, uh, having these uh, having these difficulties and 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 then therefore the benefit of these qualities to others, and then that's when we would sort of uh, sort of label this person or that quality as being a noble. <laughs> So this, uh, so I think it's probably you can see then from those qualities. I think it's quite easy to perhaps connect uh, these qualities of being learned, being um, uh, pure, virtuous, and uh, and being noble, uh, up to the qualities of, that we talk about with the Buddha of being uh, of the qualities of the Buddha's wisdom. Uh, their um, kindness or loving kindness or compassion and uh, the power or ability as we say. So I won't say too much more about that. <laughs> uh, uh, if, you, if you don't quite know how those two things uh, connect, uh, those those two sort of, uh, those group of categories connect, then let me know and I'll try to explain. Do you? <laughs> you, you uh, so which one of the three leads to, to power? Grows oh, into power. Yeah. Is the yeah. Yeah. How do we correlate those? Yeah. Ah. 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 You you want one by one Now first one. Chill Sangha the uh Tekonani Momba. Tekonani Momba said the Momba Sang at the chair. Momba said you uh to be sent down tele any be chinji lord. Because and so in terms of uh, uh then if we talk about uh, the uh, kind of keba, uh, yeah so in terms of this um in terms of uh understanding this uh, the relationship between um uh, being uh, learned and also the wisdom the, the, the wisdom quality then this specifically relates to uh understand uh, our, our confusion uh, about uh, uh, the way uh about the about suchness uh, so confusion about suchness, but also not just confusion about it, but the way that we uh, grasp in in a kind of completely inverted, uh, completely opposite way to the, the way of suchness. And um, that uh, grasping 
uh, and then understanding that that grasping, uh, the antidote to that grasping is the wisdom which realizes selflessness. And then somebody who is skilled in not in in ex not just explaining that or, or revealing that to others, but also someone who is skilled uh, in uh, developing that uh, in their own continuum. Then that would be connected. To, that would be the wisdom. So that's what they're skilled in, and that we call it the wisdom. Right, Kevin, did you want campus? Yeah, you so um in terms of the th the second uh the one the term of power or ability then this relates to the second quality of the three of learnedness virtuousness and uh the digital uh, but, yeah, uh, so they related to the virtue or purity and this in terms of the um, based on the, that knowledge that we have about uh, the, uh, such as the antidote to the afflictions, then um, that person, because it's a monsoon, the chasm monsoon, the tabba cousin. So then, um, the being able to, uh, on the basis of that antidote, being able to um, uh, uh, be uh, to, to to be just put an end to the uh, the three the poisons and the, the or the mental uh, sorry attachment aversion and ignorance. Then that becomes um, uh, what you said, the, uh, the realization, yeah, the realization of uh, which comes from the abandonment of the uh, attachment, aversion, and ignorance. And that uh, becomes a second quality, is in relation to the second quality of ability or power. The, the, the beautiful thing is you put all effort to bring down these negativities, right? Negativities. Yeah, right? negativities. Yeah. Okay. Ultimately, you gain a power. Uh, it's more like you burn calories and then you will look more handsome or beautiful. Right? <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so somebody asks you a question, wow, you changed completely. How did this happen? Then you will say, discipline. <laughs> right? Not eating the things I wanted to eat, starting from French fries, yeah. right? And uh, going to the gym, even you don't really don't want to go, right? So seeing these kind of benefits or, or reducing this, I got this. So quite a, you can put it like this, right? That, that is you the correct. So in terms of the uh, the 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 last quality of the uh, first three, the quality of being noble. Then this is related to that of uh, when we think about the, the Buddhist qualities of compassion or loving kindness. And here, um, the, the what one sort of definition of that uh, nobility is um, the uh, com uh, fully purified altruistic intent uh, for the welfare of others. So, uh, if you could relate this this uh, kind of causal mm -hmm. and uh, result, resultant resultant. Resultant, 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 <laughs> resultant uh, ways. Then, because you want that result, but if it is so tiring to see this kind of resultant, resultant, resultant in the Lama. But if you could see what is the most convenient, what is more relevant, most important for us is if that Guru has a power. Guru is kind, Guru is uh, skillful to lead you to this. So you can see some kind of like a kind of milestone. Hmm. You, know, you, you check on the GPS, you set a direction, 
and then it is going on a right direction. Mm -hmm. It is 100 kilometers, and then it becomes 99 and then 98, and you go like, yes, I'm going on the right direction, right? So sometimes it goes 101 and 102, and then, <laughs> yeah. and then, then you can feel like it's going to the wrong direction. So but that, you need to see where it is going. So this is uh, why uh, this, uh, the causal uh, the of the, uh, sorry, the, 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 change, the causal quality qualities mm -hmm. that how you praise to the Lama is so necessary. Uh, that's why the Lama Chantaka here is praising the Lama, the Lama, the Venerable. You have, I'm saying Venerable to you because you have this. So now, whenever you see a Venerable, you have to be very careful. <laughs> kind of Sometimes in a worldly, you have to say like, like his eminence, meaning, I don't care, but it's his eminence. Me, if some people are saying you have to say his eminence or his or whatever. But more when you in your practice, you really need to show where you are saying this. Okay, so this is how uh, Lama Chumbaba is giving, teaching unto us. Okay, that is Lama Lama Cha Celo. Cha Celo, the homage is a very uh, very strong word here. There's a break time? No break time. Right? No. No? <laughs> sorry. No need, right? <laughs> no, yeah, sorry. Yeah, after you do all things, my goodness. If you need to take a break or something, it's a one hour. So if you no need, I can move on. No need? No need? No need? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Chatello, Sedutambe. Uh, the direct translation of Chatello means. There's not like a no saying homage, but it's more like Chapsalo has uh, the meaning directly is give me your hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when would you say give me your hand? Uh -huh. And especially that kind of occasion, occasion. Uh, if you are drowned into kind of a zero. Okay, if you feel you are falling into the pit or some kind of a uh, mm, quicksand, okay, then your ways of saying, please give me my hand, help me. This is where you will raise your hand. This is one of the most powerful help you are asking. So they're saying, now I need your hand. Okay. So this is very urgently needed. So now we have to look when we make a kind of a, uh, a homage or a prostrations, whether we do have this kind of a intention uh, or the motivation. Charts, of course. And then there are three ways of uh, making prostrations from body, mind, and speech. So like a body, uh, it's more like it, you, you, we have done with the prostration. And then with a folded hand, all this has a really beautiful explanation. I don't need to do it here. Uh, not that relevant here. No. But mostly His Holiness, the one time when he was giving a, um, a Bodhicitta vow, uh, then uh, he saw few few months not folding their hand, they're just repeating <laughs> and everything what his own state. And his own said, hold your hand. And then his own didn't say anything for quite some time. And then he, he said, it is so much kind of feeling. And then he said, look at our hands. All this body, we have used this for many stupid things. <laughs> Starting from Stealing, killing, or being, and pointing fingers to the others, really fighting, but we haven't used this for such a great purpose. So now the great purpose we are here to tame our mind. Now this is the way you need to bring your body into one kind of posture that it can stay fair from the yeah, yeah. from the and with a folded hand. Now this is the right of time. So do it. Don't waste your time. This is how his one has put it. So like that, like that. So 
Right. It helps your mind whenever it's it's really funny. It doesn't work like mm -hmm. you, even you prepare your best or just yeah. how you put it, but your mind is not with you. How much you do it, it is not going to work. But when your mind is so powerful, your body has to come back. So it is more you control your body. You can do that. This is quite a easy to do. Uh, one time I was in the washroom and then I was playing a game and then what happened I uh, the foot, foot sleep okay. sleeping foot uh, yeah, uh, dead leg dead leg, oh, dead leg. Numbness happened, and then I trying to walk, right? I need to hold on my basin and put a few. <laughs> One time, my teacher called. <clears throat> when my teacher called, I was like, yes. And I, I, before I was feeling that, my teacher called and said, I'm outside of your door. And I rushed. I rushed and I did everything. And then when I received him inside and he was sitting on the sofa, and then I thought, what happened to this numbness? Normally I can't do that. But this time, no problem. No problem. So this is sometimes your mind becomes so strong, it can conquer your body. No problem. That's why we love Shana, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like it, scientists also believe in the power of the mind, how it can conquer or uh, it has an effect, effect in the sweat. Yeah. Right. Effect, on, yeah. effect on the body, yeah, effect on, the body. on your brain. So that is how they uh, found this medicine called placebo. <laughs> right. So one of my when a friend first one I heard of this medicine, uh, it is really funny because uh, one of his uh, not one of his his father. <laughs> 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 so his father was very stubborn, very stubborn. So he went to the hospital. He was super sick, and then it, it, it admitted him to hospital. And then uh, doctor gave him the medicine to sleep. Made the medicine to what sleep. Medicine to sleep. Sleeping pills. Okay. And then he has so much pain, and then uh, he gets mm -hmm. this uh, pill, and then he becomes so relaxed and should sleep. Mm -hmm. And then it went through like a week, and then one day Dodo comes and say, "Now you are kind of recovered quite well, and uh, I'm not giving you this uh, sleeping pill anymore because now you can sleep normally." And then Dodo goes away, and then uh, father tries to sleep. He couldn't sleep. He couldn't speak. He says, Oh, with this pain, how can I sleep? He was shouting to his son. And then, after maybe a few hours later, he calls the doctor in. Doctor says, Yeah, this is very normal outcome. And then the doctor comes. And then uh, Dodo was turned his back and then putting kind of injection into his glucose, his IV. Mm -hmm. And then and then his father says, thank you so much. So thank you, thank you very much. And right after maybe a few minutes later. <laughs> and that who is the witness? The son saw everything. So this, so that, it is something from the mindset. So powerful. Okay, so why I'm saying this? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, doesn't matter. 
Yeah. Power of the mind over the bottle. What? Power of the mind over the bottle. Holding hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. Holding hands. Okay. So, uh, so how sometimes what we do, not having so much kind of a, a strengthen of your mind, but then we try to change our uh, behavior, right? Yeah. Behaviors, yeah. body, that's what it is. physical behavior, physical behaviors, and then. Then every time it goes like if somebody is coming and then you pretend you are doing something and then you will be not enjoying that. Okay. So yeah, it is necessary. Uh, first, whatever you do, be honest to yourself that how much you are enjoying or not. Then if you are really not enjoying, we shouldn't do so much things and make so much commitments that you will regret in the future. So uh, we do so, sort of things and then we enjoy and then we cry a lot. It's like, I cannot handle this anymore. Um, okay, so we finish on the, the, uh, the, sorry, the first. Yeah, the pain homage, the first pain homage. That is the first thing that we have to do with the first thing that we have to do with the first thing that we uh, so then we come to the first verse of the text, uh, which reads, I shall explain here to the best of my ability the essential points of all the scriptures of the conqueror, the path acclaimed by all excellent bodhisattvas, the gateway for the fortunate ones aspiring for liberation. Actually, this text was sent by Lama Tsongkhapa to one of his top quality, uh, qualified, qualified uh, student who is going into the retreats. And then uh, he sends a letter to Lama Tsongkhapa saying, I miss you very much. And this, this teaching really changed my life. But still, I feel so much at, uh, this distance from you. It is always a kind of a, some kind of disturbs me. So in order to uh, to cover these gaps well, uh, to people, close the gap. close, to close this gap, and teach me, uh, please uh, give me some kind of a, a teaching. So then he sends this beautiful text to him. So, but as this is an act of a Buddhist sattva, so look, it is not like, hey, you, my dear student, it does not go like that. <laughs> he goes, I'm going to write this text, person who really wants the liberation, who the rock and they yeah. have to yeah the the uh, the fortunate ones aspiring for liberation i'm sending this text to that person uh, so at the end he will just go come uh, up with uh, that particular person now uh, uh, now you are going to a uh, very uh, isolated meditation yeah. so now this is how you start with this isolation so it is such a great picture. People who really wanted to do retreat with this instruction, then you go retreat. Before that, go retreat, not really, really effective. Sometimes we do lots of retreats, lots of purification, comes out same, <laughs> and sometimes worse. <laughs> because it's more like uh, taking a, such a long gap from what you like the most, like alcohol, right? You are so addicted, <laughs> and then you feel like, no, I'm not going to have it, and if you're deep inside, you're so really wanted it, and then after two days, you go to the bar and you finish two bottles. You're crazy, right? So similarly, this is a, a kind of a, the guidance uh, from this great master saying uh, to the, all of us, people who wanted to go into retreat, should have a quite good understanding of that. And sometimes we can call these uh, three uh, practices can be recognized as one of the biggest preliminary practices. Preliminary practice. right. oh, now he's saying the number and 
and so what it uh, what he's saying here in these first lines we talk he he, he says um i should explain here to the best of my ability the essential points of all the scriptures of the conquerors what he's saying is that uh, through, uh, through all, uh, all of the words that were spoken by the Buddha and, uh, contained in the Kangya, and then all of this sort of lineage of uh, other texts um, uh, about these, uh, about the path, um, all of them uh, say that the essence of the uh, the essence of the path is these three principal aspects. Uh, uh, these are the uh, these are the root of the path, and so it's said that so then he that that's why he says these are the essential points of all the scriptures of the conquerors. Uh, so and they're praised and so these uh uh, these these are then phrased these three practices of uh, uh, renunciation bodhicitta and the wisdom of emptiness are uh, as as described in uh, uh, you know in the in the in the great text so, so uh, in in the kanga and the great text that the uh, these are praised again and again as the paths uh, uh, for um, all uh, uh, as it says in the third line the path acclaimed by all excellent bodhi bodhisattvas as well um, the ones who practice that, the, the paths of the bodhicitta, emptiness, and renunciation. And so they also uh, praise this path as well. Right. <laughs> Changu Oh. And so, um, in terms of these uh, three uh, uh, three practices of renunciation, bodhicitta, and emptiness, then um, for those, for instance, and for instance, uh, those who wish for only to att attain liberation uh, have to rely on the on the path of the, the door to that uh, uh, liber the liberation that they wish for is renunciation. In terms of the uh, bodhisattva path, the uh, the, the door uh, for them to attain the uh, fully enlightened uh, state of a Buddha um, would be the the, the the door to that is uh, is bodhicitta, and for both of those uh, sort of paths of practice, uh, for, whether for uh, only for liberation or for uh, the complete enlightenment, then without having the uh, wisdom which realizes uh, which understands emptiness. Uh, then not, they, those it's not possible to enter those doors either. So um, if, if you are a, um, whether you're a person a practitioner um, which uh, wishes to attain a, a fully enlightened state of a Buddha, which has the quality of uh, which has the sort of quality of the uh, form body, which is able to uh, which is kind of spon spontaneously and effortly uh, work for the welfare of all sentient beings, or whether you're um, a, per, uh, a person who wishes to attain uh, personal peace, peace just for peace of liberation, just for oneself, and therefore um, require renunciation. Whichever path you're on, it's it's true to say that 
um, for instance, uh, that, that you have to enter through these doors, uh, those are the specific doors for your path, just as if you were to wish to, if there was a house and you wish to enter that house, uh, but instead of entering that, what you what you desired was inside. But instead of entering the door, you continued to serve, you know, walk around the outside without entering the door. Then you won't uh, the same with these. You won't be able to attain the result you desire unless you enter these doors. And so we can infer um, the the uh, Lama Tsongkhapa's uh, the quality of compassion also uh, when he says in the what is the first line in the English where it says I shall explain here uh, to the best of my ability. Yeah. Normally we say that, and then best of my ability becomes uh, very very limited. Very limited. So somehow, mm -hmm. uh, best of my knowledge, you you really don't know what you're really saying. It. Uh, so that why that's why you know, my kind teacher. If I ask him one occasion, only one time, I asked him a very difficult question, mm -hmm. and then he thought like, oh, that's a really good answer. question." So I couldn't think anything about this at the moment. So I will check and then I'll come to you, okay? So he he will go and uh, research about that with all, the, and then almost a month, I will totally forget. And then my teacher went, months ago, you asked this my question, right? So I have the answer now. So this, this is, one kind of example saying even you don't have ability but you will do your best best of your ability it doesn't mean it necessarily you have it i will put my all efforts that i can deliver you the best so this is the word saying same thing here do we particularly sort of set aside a time for question and answer? Oh, no, right. So maybe like uh, maybe not not today. Uh, tomorrow tomorrow maybe evening. Uh, before uh, tomorrow evening today. Uh, so second is from uh, and three to five, isn't it? Yeah. That's it. Uh, no, no, two thirty to two thirty to five. Oh, two thirty to five. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, like and would you like them to write it down or just bring it verbally? Whatever, whatever. Okay. So then we can discuss something. Okay. <clears throat> uh. Maybe I can act like my teacher, like go to India, come back next year, and then uh, try to answer. Then we should like share with us. Can last three days. Then let's try to then just try to do something. Get a job. Then let's do something. Get into the country. Then do something. The uh, two days. Then we do that. Then we do something. Then we do something. Then we do something. And so the, uh, the second verse uh, explains to us how to, uh, when we're listening to the Dharma, how uh, the, the way in which we should listen to the Dharma. And it reads, those who are not attached to the joys of psychic existence, who, st who strive to make meaningful this life of leisure and opportunity, and who place their trust in the path that pleases the conquerors, O oh, fortunate ones, listen with an open heart. Mm. So we probably, uh, when it talks about in the te in the text, the not uh, not being attached to the joys of psychic existence, as it says it, and then I think that perhaps this this sort of particular 
uh, quality or uh, aspect, we may maybe we don't sort of fulfill that criteria. So that's why we are not ready to go to the retreat <laughs> at the moment. Mm -hmm. But the person where he writes this letter, that that is a perfect person. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Jazanga civic devola machashin said the Tata Chidara. Devola Machava, Machava said Tadesna, and Sibi Devola Lomaji. Sibi Deva did the Taji to do this, Rikit Chilona. Uh, so then not being attached to uh, the, where it says not being attached to the joys of uh, the happiness or joys of samsara means, uh, also doesn't mean uh, seeing uh, samsara as a sort of one-sidedly as being completely terrible. The mari terrible, the dupa dupa. Not seeing it completely in one-sidedly as being completely terrible. Uh, uh, so here, uh, person has to have some kind of ability uh, to see, experience a bit of, uh, without using anger, uh, without using attachment, and then he has seen uh, that he can still bring the pleasure. Uh, in his life, uh, one of the one of the good examples because both of us uh, like football. Also, time to time we uh, follow the match in the matches. Matches. Uh, uh, me, me as a Man City, and he as a Liverpool. So, so uh, we discuss sometimes. Uh, if you don't take a side, and you. You bought a ticket, okay, and you don't have any one to side. Then how would you enjoy the football? And you cannot go like staying in the uh, Liverpool side. And if the uh, Man City scores, you cannot clap. Not a good, right? So and that's that's uh, not okay actually. <laughs> So, so, so I come to the conclusion: if one great bodhisattva or a practitioner <laughs> goes into there, <laughs> and maybe he will take a side for sure, like he is Man City for sure. Right? <laughs> 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 so he, uh, imagine he is a Man City fan, but then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even uh, if the Liverpool loses like a six uh, zero, uh, but then he will scream, he will go, go crazy, he will put all the blue things on the sky, whatever. And then, because he does not have strong thinking attachment, that's why he does not have an aversion towards the other fan. So that means he will not make any kind of big scene out from there. So like he wins, okay, wins. It's more like a good players, when they finished, they hugged each other saying, I had a great time. We enjoy this. We make all the people enjoy this event. So this is how they end beautifully. But there could be some ordinary beings in this stadium, so then they, due to the erosion, strong attachment, they go back home and then make a like even in the pair, like his father could be like Man City and he could be Liverpool, they will fight for like save so many bad things, and they're so like maybe they they maybe the. Maybe the father will kick out his son for one stupid reason. Okay. So, mm. so here uh, we can kind of imagine when to enjoy, how to enjoy, how to release your attachment, and then we can say attachment is okay because we don't have the clinging attachment. The problem is not the desire itself. The problem is 
when you really don't know when it's too much. Uh, so, uh, uh, so then with that line, says relating this to that line, that those who are not attached to the joys of psychic existence. But now he has experienced this kind of joy without attachment and aversion. Now he wants to make this very strong. I experienced this once. I wanted to hold this forever. And that means I need to make my mind very strong. Unless it comes and goes very quickly, that we have experience. So I wanted to do, because the meditation, retreat means a kind of meditation. Mm -hmm. What does meditation mean? In a Tibetan, we have a, a word for a med med meditation. It's a gom. Gom mm -hmm. means in order to change the habit. Right. Uh, familiarity. Oh, familiarity. Right. Familiarity. Right. To make fam uh, making familiar. So because even you feel like this is good, but if you cannot make it familiar, mm -hmm. then of course you will forget it. Then there are so much distractions that you will take away. That's why I call distraction. Uh, why the distraction can be bad. Because if you wanted to go there and then somebody invites you to come there and there, then you cannot reach to the goal, that's a distraction. Even if it's your best friend who invites you for a uh, stay overnight or stay. So, for so like this, you know, when you feel like, unless I cannot enjoy the life like this, then how much I get uh, kind of practice or thing, I cannot be strong for sure, then I have tasted. I felt this is it. I really want to bring this familiar familiarity in my life. And this is how I think the person kind of has kind of a uh, commitment to, to bring this meditation. Okay. So, uh, Oh, that they were my chashing, the enjoy to me, chashing, jump, yes, to do them. So now you should appreciate your life. Jesanga, uh, they were, they were to the George, you tell me what I'm just doing with your wife. A yin, I am the teacher. Ah, so then, uh, in, in relation to the second verse where, where it says, uh, the second aspect who strive to make meaningful this life of leisure and fortune. And so there we have the sort of eight, what are called the uh, eight uh, freedoms and the ten endowments to oh. um, the qualities of the um, So now if you found the first thing, like how really that my life can be so beautiful with this, then now you will start appreciating how this is so great. Who found that? It's you. It's you that found it. So then, this is the mind that you found it. And this is the body that found it. And now you could say, if you look at others, how they uh, spend their life, how they are going through such a, even, even they are billionaire, millionaire, whatever, doesn't matter. But they all come to the, some kind of limited happiness. Even people say, why he has made this? How can he suffer? Because he's a millionaire. He has all this. How he cannot enjoy that? But of course, my one of my friends, Rebuche, uh, told me, sometimes you need to tell the people uh, the suffering level is something very funny. If you are very, very poor, it has its own level of suffering. When you are staying in a five star hotel, there is a five star level of suffering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So so it goes like that. So so it is a kind of good, right? So you look at now the solution. You look at from up to the maybe uh, uh, maybe the now richest person 
Elon Musk. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Uh, maybe could have lost whoever is suffering like who does not have anything to eat of this. From A to Z, if they don't have this kind of quality to enjoy this life, then you you think I can feel that kind of happiness. I kind of feel that, that they are, they are not feeling this. So now their life and my life is two different lives with two different of the mind capacity. Now I feel so I appreciate the way of my thinking. It's not a pride, it's a confidence. Because you have the answer for that. So Lama Tsongkhapa is saying, once you have this kind of quality of mind, time to time, time to time, you have to appreciate your life. That others, they don't have it, I have it. So now, how you appreciate it? A very really nice one. Saying, if you have this precious, then you might lose it. You might lose it. What do you do? Now, when you found a, you have a, uh, you found a piece of diamond, maybe you bought a piece of diamond, you will, even it's in the Swiss bank, is it yeah, the Swiss, bank. Swiss bank, and you are traveling, maybe you were thinking like, is it safe or not? Uh -huh. And you hear something about, something happened near to the Swiss bank, mm -hmm. you will go <laughs> like crazy. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Something that didn't happen right in the bank, you would just feel like so much tension there. So, like this, once you have this degree of this kind of thinking in your life, so with so much appreciation, so much kind of a, a, a confidence in your life, but then you wanted to guard it, save it, you wanted to put a shield in front of this. That's why now uh, these practices are bereavements uh, condense into because uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the entire sort of state, great stages of the uh, path to enlightenment condense down into these practices. Because Lama Chongkaba wrote this a great book the, the uh, uh, stages uh, of path. Yeah, the treatise. Of path. Now, now that that uh, you cannot take a huge books and iPads and a computer into your <laughs> seat. Mm -hmm. So that's why it was be very really simple. So in the air, when you start appreciating, the most thing that it will take away is the laziness. So in order to bring this kind of a reminder, this wow, if I really should appreciate this. This is something very fantastic. I have to hold on to that. That which gives you a strongest motivation to hold it is when you look into the impermanence of life. Saying we normally probably say one who is born has to die. <laughs> We say that proudly, we the like we know it, we accept that as a reality. Okay? Because we accept this, maybe it's you see that death is too far. Like we count on for, for me, I'm a 40. So like say, hmm, maybe if I stay 80, there's 40 more years yeah. to go. So you feel like kind of safe. Okay. Yeah. The most most worry thing if somebody is so caring about your practice that I wanted to bring this kind of experience to my life and would really wanted to use it. And then he says, if, if the death comes just now, and I really need to be very strong, then it is a different way of knocking on the uh, impermanence button. Like my teacher would say, uh, because impermanence is, otherwise, this, uh, the impermanence of the death is uh, very strongly recommended only here. Uh, others, uh, you, you can just study and contemplate and go on, move on. 
but because whenever you have to appreciate something that you found is something necessary to bring this practice, if there is a little delay in that, that you feel you will lose it. So then in order to save from this kind of laziness, you bring the uh, practice of the impermanence on the death. And then my teacher has a very good example. Uh, if uh, you have, if you been here in Switzerland or in Germany, uh, I don't think there is a problem. When you wait on uh, for a train, mm -hmm. it comes right on time. Mm -hmm. So you go like, okay, still we have time. We we'll go for a coffee and then hang out and then come back on right on time. It's okay. We're ten minutes before it's perfect. So it's okay. But if you are in India, <laughs> you really don't know what, when it will leave, how long it will stop, and maybe super late, it's quite known as a quite in the late system. But sometimes they will not stop. So with this mind, what did we do is yeah. sometimes we don't take off our packet, the <laughs> backpack. We just put it here and wait. Whenever the train is coming, I'm going to jump. Yeah. That one, right? So, so you have this backpack, and the timing doesn't matter whenever it comes. I want to jump yeah. on train. So similarly, a great practitioner, what they are using the the call of this kind of urgency is always whenever this comes up, I don't care. I have this kind of understanding doesn't matter. So uh, this uh, in the, uh, the section of the, the first scope, it is most, maybe more than 20, 30 pages, Lama Tsongkhapa will explain about that. So we need to bring this kind of practice in there. Machashin, saying don't attach to that. <clears throat> what does that attachment does? It's full of distractions, saying like, I enjoy this, this this first, and I do the practice. Mm -hmm. That we do, we do something like that, isn't it? So like, yeah, wow, the teaching is so good, yeah. So now <laughs> then, I don't have a practice. I don't. I don't have a time to practice that. So we 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 say that because maybe we don't. You don't. Maybe you really don't know how to take this kind of practice in your work, in into your day to day life, but. It's, most important thing you found, you think like you found something and then you feel like it's kind of optional. You don't see this as like urgency. Urgency, the word. Yeah. 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 Is it, it's a word? It's a, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. You can see it's oh, urgent. Right. Uh, I'm making sure I didn't. No, no sense. Of it. <laughs> oh, okay. So, yeah. Sense of it. So now, just like my child is 20, any. え、ジギンギチャワ、ジギンギチャワ、ジギ、イバカジジラ、え、ま、ランチュビタンダ。え、タンキ、ま、ジュステンバティ、マチャベコネ、マチャベコネ、え、ランチュナンジギンギジュビ
semian or the consent that they turn Tamadigi, that the Bashi digi. I say, uh, Chen Bashi's simple. That a diggy, uh, Chabot, yeah. A diggy, a rangu, nearly a Machabi one, eh? A long jet on the lapse of the lap, and do you, I'm sure you do sugar or the Chabot dig nuggy to us. So then, if we're able to have that sense of being able to sort of engage or in, enjoy or engage with uh, worldly activities, uh, but without that sense of attachment, then that stops us. That, that sort of acts as a sort of a, a counterpoint to uh, the, the attachment and, the, and, the, and then, as it says in this line, not uh, you, you have this state where you're not attached to the joys of psychic existence. Yeah. So, uh, day and night, sorry, it's yeah. a day and night. Yeah. Okay. The, uh, my teacher uh, once told me that one of his uh, niece, very, very, very small, but in the age of like uh, maybe 11 or 12, and then uh, she has one favorite uh, uh, person in her life. That's her, uh, maybe some relative, some uh, some of this, I mean, relative. Then that lady comes to meet her, she will be super happy. Like if, when she hears that she is coming on Sunday, Saturday, she will be so happy, excited, you know. Even in the dreams, she will say that when you're coming, when you're coming, no. Mm -hmm. So like this kind of a, a strong uh, attachment actually, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. it, this kind of a relation uh, went for such a long time, and then one day, one day, uh, her mother uh, told this little kid saying, "She's coming tomorrow," and then she's not smiling. And she said, so what? <laughs> and then she said, no, are you not happy? Because she's coming again to meet you. And then she's your favorite. What happened? He said, I'm, before I used to be happy. Now I cannot be happy because she's going to leave again. <laughs> That's what he said. And then they were like, oh, such a stupid young kid. She, the, the, why she has to think about going, she, you have to appreciate what she's coming tomorrow, something like that. So my teacher was there and said like, stop, this is the best thing I have to do. <laughs> this is the yeah. entirely you in the, your life, you cannot say this. Thinking and experience, forget about it. He teased. Uh -huh. The same thing. So that kid, actually was amazing because realized that I wanted to enjoy something. How can I enjoy if I cannot let this go? And then somebody leaves you and there's so much pain here. And how can I enjoy this? So she has this kind of a, uh, idea there. So here, only thing to enjoy in our life very peacefully is without the attachment, without uh, going, I will, I will, I'm giving you a hint here, uh, uh, going against the nature, because of nature is away. Mm -hmm. Going against our, uh, going the against the, the reality. Yeah. Uh, going against the reality and Accepting the reality how it is, and then uh, have to move on that path pattern, and there is always a peace. Uh, so therefore, Jesanga that danger, dangeri, dangeri, samotamban, dangeri, you go on it, and you cannot touch into some shows. And then, so he says, uh, with that context in mind of the uh, this life that we have, this life of leisure, leisure and opportunity, as it says in the text. Then, then you have to, he says, then uh, you know, set out on making great effort. Mm. Yawa 
So then this is in sort of, and it says in the third line, and then place their trust in the path that pleases the conquerors. Then when we sort of orientate ourselves towards a kind of the, the direction that we're heading in, the path that we're heading in, and then this is sort of in relation to the way uh, that orientating ourselves towards that path is in the way that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas have explained to us that this this particular way will lead to uh, will because uh, uh, thank you the, the, will please the conquerors and this particular way will not displease the conquerors so the way that we follow the path on the basis of that uh, advice. Well, first we need to be super careful when we say please the the great beings please the Buddha. Mm. It is not like ordinary pleasing thing. <laughs> it's not like uh, you offered uh, a kid mm. like a. Uh, Swiss chocolate, mm -hmm. and then they become so happy, and mm -hmm. then you don't give them, they do not happy. Not like that. It's more like what does that really please or not please, uh, not please is something the guidance they have given because they reach on this path, and that's in, in their experience, they brought up this kind of peace in their life mind so they know how it works so if you go come through this but today this is a piece this is a, uh, uh, how they are pleased it's not like <laughs> it, it is not like uh, uh, in order to they to make them happy you need to put an extra effort so it's more like if you go through the reality, if you carry the life with more happily, without any so much thinking, that really pleases. That's why His Holiness the Lama says, best gift for my birthday mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. please practice bodhicitta and emptiness. That is the best thing to give for me. I don't want anything else. That's what he says. This is how it works. So, uh, then when we talk about in the last line of the fortunate ones, is that the people who have that kind of mindset who are the ones who are fortunate. That's why we call them fortunate. Mm -hmm. So, up to now, uh, we covered up the setting the motivation and how to be this circle of the origins of listening to these three, three principal aspects of the path. So now, uh, tomorrow, uh, we will go through uh, the renunciation. What is the renunciation? And then after that, we will talk about with the cheetah. And then we we have uh, taking, yes. taking suffering into the path. Uh, it, it, these texts, particularly this, the texts, it's so relevant to uh, when someone, someone, uh, uh, not only, not only, uh, not only to uh, get rid of, get rid of, uh, eliminate, eliminate the suffering, but somehow the difficult is. When, when you try to help others, then you feel so limited. Even you are full of knowledge, but then uh, if you really don't know how to bring up a patience, that patience is like a, not a, a kind of patient, patience for a short time. It is like uh, saying uh, the, the, there is a praise uh, the the praise by Kasat, the quotation from uh, mm -hmm. uh, from the Shanti Devas. Uh, so it says, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, um, as long as sentient beings remain, as long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, so may it too remain to dispel the misery of the world. Mm -hmm. That kind of work, uh, you wanted to bring this patience, and then. 
It is not a few minutes we are talking about, few hours we are talking about. It is something like impossible things it's trying to say here. So whether it's impossible or it doesn't matter, but it's so beautiful if we can become like that. So what is the the obstacle? Obstacle is difficult. Yeah, yeah. Obstacle. Yeah. Uh, uh, obstacle. The obstacle to, to that to bring this is self cherishing. That self cherishing is not like self grasping. That self cherishing is uh, something I can do it. I cannot do it. And then even you can do it. But if you need to bring a motivation, set up motivation, like tomorrow when you we meet and then we go like oh Sanjay Shodam Sanjay Shodam, we have to bring this kind of motivation again and again. It is one of the biggest obstacle. So if there is a day you don't need to recite this, and then you, it is, it is something like a. A breath you are taking, it's like you no, know, it does not take any effort. That becomes a part of your life. This kind of a patience you have. That's why you we are wanted to become a Buddha. And here, uh, when we talk of, uh, about Buddhicitta, so then this especially taking to taking suffering into the path is something very important, necessary here. Yeah. So then this is why I thought it would be so relevant to connect this beautiful, two beautiful texts together. Okay. Uh, so now only we have five minutes. We do a dedication. Okay. So, Oh, read it. Somebody will read that. Yeah. Oh, the dedication. 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 Yeah. page six. Okay. Page six. Okay. Page six. Okay. Page six. Page six. Page six. Seven and eight. Okay. Um, due to this virtue, may I quickly attain the state of the Guru Buddha and leave all transmigratory beings without succession into the enlightened state. May the precious Supreme Bodhicitta not yet born arise and grow. May that arisen not decline, but increase more and more. May the precious view of emptiness that has not arisen arise and grow. And may that which has not arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. Uh, page seven, uh, for his long life, but for his holiness, the Dalai Lama. The wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world. To the incomparably kind tested guests, so I beseech, may all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. Uh, and then the, the prayer, prayer uh, the traditional prayer for some long life of his wholeness. In the land encircled by snow and mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful generous depend together. Please remain until that star. And then uh, prayer for his homeless wishes to be spontaneously fulfilled. Savior of the land that no teaching has passed by great reading, who extensively clarifies the path that unifies emptiness and compassion, was the lotus hold attempting gap, so I beseech. May all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. And in the prayer for the swift return of Lama Zubrahamshya. Patiently bearing the hardships of spreading the teachings of the Muni general and the teachings of the victorious Jambon Sankarpa in hundreds of directions. Lord of Dharma holding the three vows and wearing saffron robes, please quickly return to the glory of the peer of the teachings.